Welcome back. I'm speaking to a woman who broke glass ceilings and possibly concrete ceilings, becoming the first woman and the first Black Bronx Borough president. Joining me to discuss this historic victory is none other than Bronx Borough President-elect Vanessa Gibson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. Happy holidays to everyone. So as I mentioned, you made history with this win. How does it feel to enter the lineup of women who changed the world of politics? It feels great. I am overwhelmed with just emotion, um, knowing that so many people have paved the way for me to be here where I am today, making history as the first ever African-American and female elected Bronx Borough president is the greatest honor of my life. And as I step into this new role, there are so many people that I am bringing with me to make sure that we elevate the voices of young girls and young women across the borough of the Bronx, that we realize that women are doing amazing things. We're shattering glass ceilings. We're stepping into roles never designed for us, and we are going to make a difference. So I'm really grateful to all the voters of the Bronx. Whether you supported us or not, I am going to be the Bronx Ball president to serve you and your families to the very best of my ability, and I look forward to this next chapter of public service. Now, I'm sure this wasn't an easy accomplishment being both African-American and a woman. What challenges do we face in this career field? Generally, women of color face challenges running for any office. <laughs> uh, it's hard to raise money. Uh, you're usually competing with uh, men uh, in terms of candidates running for office. It's really tough for women of color to break down those barriers when it comes to not just solidifying our place in history, but really overcoming a lot of the challenges. Many of us are wives, we're mothers, we are breadwinners in our families. We're caring for our loved ones, our children, adopted children, everybody's children. And, you know, it's really tough to multitask and make sure that at the end of the day, you're taking care of yourself. Self-care is number one, but you're also making sure that you are running for office for the right reasons. So many women have paved the way, and I have so many big sisters that I look up to, like the Attorney General, Letitia James, our former council speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, the first Latina elected speaker in the history of the city council, and our Bronx District Attorney, Darcel Clark, another history maker. So many women that have shattered the glass ceiling that are stepping up into these leadership roles and recognizing that women can do any and everything that we put our minds and our hearts to. Now, I think it's amazing that you made history the same year America saw its first Black and Asian American female VP in Kamala Harris. I know that you were a huge supporter of Harris. So did you reflect on this at all? And did it make your win feel even more special? I did. Uh, when Kamala Harris took her oath of office that wonderful day, I cried because I know that for her ascension to vice president, it means so much for Black and Latino women across the country. It means that we can dare to dream, we can hope to succeed, and we can really break down those obstacles that have been so many barriers for us in office, running for office, being educators, administrators, teachers, doctors, whatever it is that we want to be. Many of us are first in our family to go to college as I am. And so we're making history every single day. The single mothers out there that are raising their children, working, going to school, the educator, the social worker, the guidance counselor, the school crossing guard, the police officer, the firefighter, so many barriers that we are always breaking down. And a lot of us do it because we know that we've been called to serve. We don't do it for the accolades, for the awards and the trophies and the plaques, but we do it because we have been called to serve for such a time as this. Now, as we know, Harris became the first of her kind to sit in the Oval Office as VP, and you became the first to lead the Bronx as VP. Without a doubt, it's a huge accomplishment. But what are your thoughts on the fact that in 2021, we're still seeing first, uh, you know, for women of color, for women just in positions of power? It means that society is finally changing with the times. Society and this country is realizing that women can do anything that we put our minds to, that we can look at women as the vice president, as the next Bronx Ball president, as the attorney general. We can see women in positions of power and influence that we've never seen before. It means that the world is recognizing that women are a critical part of the political process of our democracy. When you think about this country, when you think about places like Pennsylvania and Georgia. It was, it was black, black women. 
black women that really mm -hmm. allow these elections to happen, that allow Kamala Harris to ascend to vice president. So for me, it means that times are changing. We're embracing a new season and a new chapter. And it doesn't mean that things will not go well. It means that it's a chance to be creative and innovative. It's a chance to give women the opportunity to show us who they are, show us their skill set to prove to the world that women can do anything, and really making sure that we lead with our hearts and our minds and with conviction and commitment and consistency and integrity. And we do all the things that our male counterparts have been doing for generations. And now it's the season of women, the year of the female, and now we're stepping up in these major roles. Now, in an article for the Bronx Times, you share that women of color are winning seats that weren't meant for us. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. When you think about the incoming city council members that are joining the new body in 2022, 31 are women, and a majority of them are women of color, African-American women, Latina women, and Southeast Asian women. And women of color are just making up the entire body of the city council. And it's exciting. There is a new momentum happening across the city, and women are stepping out of their shells. We are defying the odds. Uh, we may not be the best and most powerful fund raises, but we're getting things done. And we're doing it in such a way where we are winning these offices and we're stepping into these new roles. Just alone in the Bronx, in the city council's Bronx delegation, we have new women coming in. My successor, Althea Stevens, in District 13, Marjorie Velasquez, who is the first ever Latina elected council member in the East Bronx. We have Amanda Farias in the Park Chester Castle Hill area of District 18. We have Farina Sanchez in the West Bronx, District 14. And we have Diana Ayala, who is a candidate running for speaker of the city council, representing El Barrio in the South Bronx. So I'm excited to work with these women, as well as all of my colleagues in the state legislature. And I really think as we move forward, we have to realize that we have to provide gender equality and making sure that women are at the table making these decisions just as we expect anyone else to be. We have to make sure that women are at the forefront of these conversations and the decision making power. And I also want to just like kind of put emphasis on like, you know, the women of color part. It's why in my intro, I said, you know, possibly concrete ceilings, because we do have this added layer of, you know, dealing with our identity as people of color and then dealing with identity as, you know, women. So I think it's really important. I'm so happy that you were able to elaborate on like, you know, why that was just so important. Um, prior to this win, you've been a strong advocate for women of all walks of life. And we've seen this through your work that you've done as a council member and your work on the New York City Council Women's Caucus. Can you tell us about that experience? Absolutely. Well, it's been an honor to be in the council for eight years. I thank the residents and voters of District 16 for their love and support and voter confidence. And for the last two years, I've had the honor of joining my co-chair, Farrah Lewis of Brooklyn, in serving as co-chair of the Women's Caucus. We started with 12 members and now we're up to 15. And although we are a 15, we represent women's issues. We represent issues around gender parity and pay equity and maternal mortality and maternal maternal morbidity and infant mortality, and so many issues that predominantly plague women and women of color, making sure that we address reproductive health care and health care justice so that women of color are not more likely to die during childbirth because of disparate health care, that women are paid the same amount as their male counterparts for equal work. We have equal payday for Latinas, for Asian Americans, and for Black women, because all of the women are not paid the same amount as their male counterparts for doing the same work with the same occupation and the same level of skill. And so as the co-chair of the Women's Caucus, we've championed these issues. We've joined our colleagues in addressing issues uh, within the NYPD Special Victims Unit, focusing on victims of domestic violence and gender-based violence and elder abuse and intimate partner violence. We've added more money for domestic domestic violence services and gender-based programs. We've supported LGBTQIA plus communities and transgender women. We are working with the Department of Corrections because we know that female corrections officers are under attack on Rikers Island and in our city jails. So we have been advocates standing up for women for equality because we know that when you stand up for women, you're standing up for children as well. 
every issue is a woman's issue. Every issue affects women in, the, in a different way. And as women in the body of the city council, we not only want to be the advocates, but we want to be the champions for women so that our young girls can grow up in a society that is free of racism and discrimination and misogyny and just so many efforts that undermine women. We want our young girls to grow up in a community that loves them, that supports them, that embraces them, that empowers them, where they don't have to deal with the challenges that many of us have face today. Now, I think it's important to note while your dedication to the Bronx deserve this outcome, and I fully believe that, I, it could not be done without support. The Bronx was ready to see change and voted in our first Black and female BP. You know, can you tell us your thoughts on that? And in what ways do you hope to continue to see our borough change? I definitely want to lead the borough as the next Bronx Bar president with commitment, consistency, and integrity and honesty. I want to build collaborations and coalitions across the borough of the Bronx. I want to have public and private partnerships. And I want to think outside of the box. We have to look at a lot of the issues like homelessness, poverty, gun violence, and so many issues around domestic violence and gender-based violence. We have to look at it from a holistic perspective. We cannot think that government is going to save us, but we have to be the ones to save ourselves. We have to believe that we deserve better as Bronx residents and families, whether you are a tenant, a homeowner, a shareholder, whether you live in a co-op, Michelama, public housing, you deserve to live in a borough that is safe, that is free of violence, good schools, clean parks and clean streets. No matter where you live, no matter where you work, you deserve that as a Bronx resident. And it is my belief and my priority to work every day with my team and I to get the job done and to work with our mayor-elect, Eric Adams and his team and all of my colleagues and all of our stakeholders. We're going to form public-private partnerships and working groups with labor unions and trades. We're going to build economic wealth and power and invest in our children and our families because when you invest in our children, you invest in their future. And our children are the future. They are the pathway to success. And we are going to make a difference in the borough of the Bronx. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me about this. I really appreciate it. Can you just let everybody know where they can keep up with you? Sure. So my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is all Vanessa L. Gibson. Uh, my Instagram is Miss Vanessa 77. Uh, I believe my Twitter is Vanessa L. Gibson, but my campaign website is GibsonBP2021.com. My transition website is uh, GibsonBPTransition.com, where we are receiving resumes for interested applicants that want to join the office of the Bronx Ball President. But you can look me up. We are anxious about getting the job done and starting to work on day one as we transition out of the city council. Thank you to the residents of District 16. May God bless you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for this incredible journey. And I wish you and your families a very happy holiday season. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. And best wishes for a wonderful and prosperous 2022. God bless you all. All right. Thank you. That was wonderful. We'll be right back with more Open BXRX Tuesday.